Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the difference between the amplitude versus the phase response in a response circuit. So here we have a simple RL circuit. We have a voltage source. We have a voltage output across the inductor, the resistor, and omega sub naught is the inverse of the time constant. So in this case, it'll be R over L because the time constant, of course, is L over R. Now notice that we have the response function as a function of the frequency, which will be the ratio of the output voltage over the input voltage. As you can see that this can be then be written as the impedance across this, so J omega L, divided by the resistance plus the impedance across the inductor. The phase angle will be the inverse tangent of omega sub naught over omega. Now, what exactly do we mean by the amplitude response and the frequency response. So notice the amplitude response is simply going to be a function of the frequency. An inductor has a greater opposition to a current flow when the frequency is very high, it has very small opposition to a current flow when the frequency is very low. When the frequency goes to zero, there is zero opposition to the current flow. In other words, if the frequency is zero, then the current will simply flow through the inductor unhindered and there will be no voltage drop across the output. So the output versus the input will be zero to the input, so therefore you can see that the amplitude response will be zero when the frequency is zero. As the frequency increases, the opposition to the current change will be greater, there will be greater voltage drop across the uh, output, across the inductor, and essentially when the frequency goes to infinity becomes very high then all of the voltage will be dropped across here relative to the resistor and the output voltage to the input voltage will be a one-to-one -one relationship so you can see that the the output the the output voltage will be virtually the same value as the input voltage as the frequency goes to infinity a key component here is if the frequency is equal to omega sub naught which is the inverse of the time constant notice then the the um, response will be 0.707 or square root 2 over 2 relative to the input voltage. But what about the phase response? Notice when the frequency is zero, the phase response is 90 degrees. When the frequency goes to infinity, the phase response goes to zero. But what does it really mean? Well, here is the definition of that. The phase response indicates the phase difference between the output voltage and the input voltage in this particular example, since of course the response function is the output voltage over the source voltage or the input voltage. So you can see here that the phase angle is not the difference between the current and the voltage, but it's the difference between the output voltage and the input voltage. And that's really important to understand, otherwise it becomes very confusing. So that means when the frequency goes to zero, there's a 90 degrees phase difference between the output voltage and the input voltage. So when the frequency response or when the frequency of the source voltage is very, very slow, there's a 90 degree difference between the output voltage and the input voltage. Of course, in the limit, when there's no output voltage, we don't have any, uh, we don't, obviously when the, the frequency goes to zero, we don't have an output voltage, but imagine it to be very, very slow so that the frequency changes really, really slowly on the source voltage. Then we can see that as soon as the voltage begins to increase from zero to something slightly above zero on the input voltage, we have an immediate response to the output voltage. So the output voltage will be at 90 degrees ahead of the input voltage. As soon as the input voltage goes past zero, we have a total voltage response on the output voltage. That will be the maximum change in the current, therefore the maximum voltage across the inductor. And that's why at very low frequencies, the phase response difference is 90 degrees. In other words, the voltage across the output will be 90 degrees ahead of the voltage of the source. Now when the voltage of the source varies very, very quickly, when the frequency goes very, very high, then the output voltage cannot be that far ahead of the input voltage on the frequency domain. And the reason for that is because there's such a quick change in here that the output voltage will be slightly ahead in the phase over the input voltage. As it goes up, it, it reaches the maximum value almost instantaneously, so it cannot be that far behind the output voltage. So as the frequency increases, the phase difference between the two gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually in the limit, as the 
frequency goes to infinity, then there's zero phase difference between the output voltage and the input voltage. Again, as the frequency increases, you get much, much more quickly to the maximum value on the source voltage, and then, of course, the output voltage cannot be that far ahead, and the difference gets smaller and smaller between the output voltage and the input voltage as the frequency goes up. So hopefully that gives you a good feel for the difference between the what we call the amplitude response and the phase response. And that's why with inductors, they are inversely related to one another. As the output voltage, as the uh, amplitude response goes up, the frequency or the phase response goes down. And that's the difference between the amplitude versus the phase response in a simple response circuit like that when we're dealing with an RL circuit. That's how it's done.